Conclusion In this book, we aim to present the relationship between the mindset constructed by the Quran and scientific activities. In the first part, this relation is investigated regarding the presuppositions of scientific studies. When we do science, we tacitly assume many principles, whether we realize them or not. For example, if everyone assumes that the universe has a rational, comprehensible structure and that the laws of nature are universal. In this book, we argued that the Quran provides rational basis for seven of these crucial presuppositions, which the common naturalist atheist approaches of the modern academic world does not. The Quran supports these presuppositions partly by presenting a theistic ontology partly by endorsing responsibilities for our deeds, sometimes by inviting to struggle to understand the universe, etc. The Quran is in line with Judaism and Christianity regarding the presuppositions it supports via theist ontology. However, the content of the Quran differs from other theistic beliefs in degree and sometimes in essence. For example, the Quranic support for the presupposition observation is important for gathering knowledge related to the universe, is much more comprehensive as compared to other theist beliefs. One can, of course, base these presuppositions on practical benefits without any rational basis. For example, one might think that studying the universe is valuable because of the benefits of scientific achievements in developing new technologies. However, the Quran rationally grounds these presuppositions even if there were no practical benefit. Lacking such rational grounds is intellectually unsatisfying. This is an intellectual advantage of a Quranic worldview over naturalist atheist philosophies. In the second part of the book, we focused on the motivation provided by the Quran for realization of scientific work. More than any other religion in the world, the Quran directs believers to study the phenomena in the universe and derive conclusions from them, thereby comprehending the might and art of God. Finding a driving force for scientific endeavor is as indispensable as having the required presuppositions in mind. Earning money, reputation, and social status can be sources of motivation, yet the Quran provides motivation without any worldly benefit. The relationship of the content of the Qur'an with the presuppositions needed for scientific work is not discussed in previous works, to the best of our knowledge. The motivations, however, are discussed in various studies. The distinction and novelty of this book is that by considering the support of the Qur'an for the discussed presuppositions together with the motivation provided by it, a detailed picture of construction of scientific mind by the Qur'an is presented. On the subject of construction of scientific mind by the Qur'an, it is obviously possible to add new topics to the ones discussed here or expand on the ones that we kept brief. For example, the subject of ethics could and should be explored in greater depth. Making sure that science benefits mankind, the next generations, the environment, and other living beings is an important ethical consideration. In a future study, we plan to expand these discussions and include further related issues that were not considered here. Although the Qur'an supports scientific studies, many Muslim societies, particularly in the last few centuries, have not followed the Qur'an in this regard. The reason behind this is the subject for other studies. Nevertheless, we believe that when such failures in the 17th through the 21st centuries as well as successes in the 9th through 13th centuries are to be considered, the discussions we present in this book can provide pertaining contributions and guidelines.